good morning, evening, afternoon, whatever part of the day is that you're watching this. Um, this is Ricky with CCL Controllers, and we are um, going to show our K8 build kit. Um, we are going to start out by saying uh, the build kit will include everything but your, um, but your K8. And what I mean by K8, I mean the K8, the screen, the beagle bone, and the SD card. Um, we do not supply any of these parts. You'll have to get these either from Dan Colt or from Wired Watts. The other part that we do not supply would be your power supply. You will need an LRS for this build. So again, you can get that from multiple vendors, even eBay. I mean, eBay, yeah, eBay will actually sell them and so does uh, Amazon. So, I mean, literally you can buy LRS power supplies everywhere. So I just wanted to be clear that these parts do not come with the kit. The kit is everything to build this controller. So without further ado, let's get this uh, this kit going. So my video is not as long as some of my other ones. So when you open up your box, let me throw the box over here. This one's actually going to get built. You get your box. First thing you're going to notice is that um, it is all pre-drilled. It's got your three receivers. It's got an Ethernet. It's got your eight outputs, and it's going to have your power. Um, we also put a hole for a uh, fan. Not a fan. I'm sorry. A vent. A vent. Not a fan. You don't actually need a fan for this. Just a vent. Okay. This is a vent. So, um, as you open up your kit, you will um, see that you have a vent. You will also see that you have um, PGs and some Ethernet um, waterproof plans, some zip ties. And I can't guarantee what's going to be in what bag because it does vary on who puts these kits together. If I put them together, I put certain things in there. If Zach put them together, certain things. So they do vary. But uh, moving on. So you're going to have your Ethernet cables. You're going to have your power cord. You're going to have your pigtails in either X Connect or in Ray Wu. Uh, a few more cables. You will have your one through eight. Um, heat shrink labels that we made. You're going to have your wire. You're going to have your Ethernet glands, the 90 degree. You're going to have a screw kit, bolt kit, a power supply plate. You're going to have a lower plate and an upper plate. So, again, the box, here's the, the, the bud box. We're going to set this aside for a minute and let's get this build cranking. So, first things first, let's bring over the power supply, because that's probably the easiest part to put together. So you're just going to open up the power supply. You're going to make sure that it's flicked here to 115 if you're in the 115 country, which would be the good old USA. Um, you we're going to flip that over. Move some of this stuff out of my way. The only problem making these videos is I pile everything up here and I kind of get all messy. But that's all right. So in the kit, you're going to have power supply brackets. Uh, these power supply brackets have um, arrows on them like our other brackets. Basically, the arrow points to the nut. Uh, not the nuts, I'm sorry, the screws on the power supply. So when you set this on here like this, the arrow should be pointing towards us. So let's throw these on here real quick. In your little parts bag, you're gonna have all kinds of cool little parts in here. So we're gonna have spacers, some big spacers in this kit. You're gonna have some long screws and then you're gonna have a bunch of these short screws. So we're actually after four of these right here. They're M4 by sixes. And those are what we're gonna use for the power supply. So we will just take a second here and let's, maybe I should probably silence my phone for my videos. Okay. You can be quiet now, phone. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, let's go back and put these screws in the power supplies. Or the power supply, sorry. This build only has one. So again, arrows going ahead. Pretty simple. Okay, 
So, what we want, what we'll do is you're gonna take your your um, lag bolts here. Let, oh, not lag bolts, sorry, carriage bolts. Man, it's early in the morning. Um, and you're going to put these four through the square holes that we cut in our plates. You know, the patent ones, if you watch my other videos, the patent pending square holes. Um, you're gonna stick those through the bottom side like this. Okay, and you can just push them into that square notch. They may stay in there, they may pop out, I can't say. So we're gonna flip that over. And then we are going to slide the power supply on. The power supply goes on in the back holes on this one. So if you put it in the front holes, what's gonna happen, I'll show you. I missed one. Put it in the front holes, you're gonna see it hangs off too far and you can't get to the get to the holes. You definitely want to use the back holes for this one. I'd actually probably use the uh, the brackets we have but okay so your power supply sits on here you're gonna have four of these these are gonna sit over top of that and then we're gonna slide this out of the way for a minute because we have got to build the k8 top so here is your your k8 i got from dan so you're gonna see that this actually sits on this supply like this there's actually gonna be four um, of these longer M3 bolts. I just put one in each corner like this. Okay. And then we're gonna do a little balancing act. These actually kind of snug on there, unlike some of my other ones where I showed you guys to squeeze them. You're going to just kind of push these on something like, like this one. See how hard that one is to go on there? I slide that on there like that. Flip the controller over. Slide that one on and we will slide the last one on okay so that's the long extensions it's going to go on the plate like this ccl to the bottom the um fusers to the bottom and we are going to stick this in the hole now this kit is designed for the newer cult k8s not the original um what did dan call them when they first came out i think it was he might have called them an F8, I think, in the beginning. And then he changed it to a K8 because David Pitts has a has an F8. But these are for the ones from this past year in 2020 and 2021. Because as far as I know, he's not changing these. I hope he don't change bolt pattern again. And when he changes the bolt pattern, it really messes up everybody. Okay. And then normally um, for these, I'll just use, because I don't have a, um, a wrench that small here. And then we're just gonna snug these bolts up, right quick like. What's nice is this kit really assembles nice and fast. Um, see we have um, a couple extra screws you will find extra screws in my kits normally in case you lose some I like to throw in a few extra here and there so, um, so now as you can see you can easily get to the SD card on the side of this one you do not need the extension like we put in some of our other kits you can also get to the USB very easily on this one so we're gonna leave all that now slide this back over here and we're just gonna set this on top and we are going to take our wing nuts. I told you guys these assemble pretty quick. This will be like one of my quickest videos. Actually, no, I'm gonna do a K40 at some point. That one's gonna be pretty quick too. I gotta, I gotta see if I got the parts to build that one. Nuts. I said this one's pretty self-explanatory. Um, now we have the board on the lower chassis. So we're all done with that. Let's set these screws out of our way because we're not gonna need those. And then we're gonna need these when we put this in the box. So next, let's just take and wire this thing so we can be done with this part. Um, again, I give a little, I give a foot of wire. You're not even gonna need that. Um, but I give you plenty. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to strip these back. I don't know, about a half of an inch or so. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I am going to take my flat screwdriver, which is right here, and I am going to just split these 10 gauge wires and fork them like that. See, nice fork just like that. Let's find my screwdriver. I need to. I used to use a screw gun for this, but I'm going to use a screwdriver for the video's sake. So we're going to loosen up this guy. We're going to loosen up that one. And if you look, the board does say V plus and ground, so you know which one goes which where. So we're going to go ahead and put the V plus on right here. And we're just going to lightly snug this one down, kind of hold it. And then we're going to stick the ground in and we're going to do the same thing. We are going to just lightly snug it down. We don't need to get crazy yet because what happens with this and Falcons as well is a lot of times these get twisted and they'll actually break off the board. So after I, after I just lightly snug them, what I like to do is I like to take a pair of needle nose pliers like this and I just like to hold that connector. Now tighten these things up nice and tight because you don't want these getting loose on you. Oops. That's what causes fire sometimes, or burnouts, is when these screws loosen up. But again, you don't want to rip it off the board either. So next, what we're gonna do, is we basically just gonna get these connected to the power supply um, as neat as we can. So as you can see, this is pretty, um, these, these wires are actually pretty long. Um, I'm just gonna kinda give it an eyeball here and see, get them shortened up here a little bit. Again, I was giving you guys plenty of wire. Well, let's just trim these back a little bit. And then we're gonna see how that looks. And that's not too shabby like that. And then that one is gonna look like that. So that's not too bad. Something like that might be all right. Um, you can also bend these down if you want a little bit. Get them a little bit cleaner, but you see that? That's not too bad. So now I know I got that where I want it. We're gonna take and strip this end as well. It is a lot harder to do this where you guys can see what I'm doing than if I was doing it just to do it. So I'm going to strip these back about the same amount, a little over half of an inch. And then the other thing I want to do is the same thing I did on the last ones. I want to take and split these wires like this and split these wires like this. And just kind of fork them a little bit like that because again I'm not into spades I am going to use a screw gun for this one um, hook the ground up uh, these Milwaukee's I buy them they're like I don't know like 100 bucks I think but they actually have a torque on them you know they're the detachable ones so this one's really nice so you can run you know around eight or nine or so this one's getting a little worn out so i'm a little higher um on the torque and it'll torque these down really nice and tight so now i'm just going to take a minute here and just kind of bend these back let's get these bent down like that i just I kind of like that look a little bit, a little bit more. It's a little bit cleaner. Again, just as you can see, just like that. Okay, that's all tight. We know these are nice and tight. So we have a little extra wire. You can uh, save that for another little project or whatever. Um, now, let's set this aside. Let's get our box over here. And uh, let's throw the box together real quick. Like I said this uh, this video is pretty uh, gonna be pretty self-explanatory. It's not not too awful difficult to build these. Now, dump out all the parts. I do throw in some zip ties. I don't know if you actually even need any zip ties. For any zip ties for this build? To be honest with you. Um, actually, yeah, we might need a couple for the Ethernet cables. I'll set them aside. So we have some PG sevens. Throw them in these holes here. And you 
can get these. If you need more for, you know, if you're doing some building or whatever, you can get these on. I mean, eBay has them, and Amazon has them, Ken sells them. I mean, you can get them from the Chinaman. Um, now, I, I do notice on these, you can buy them all from the same vendor, and you will get three different styles. Um, uh, these PG glands are pretty inconsistent as far as um, lot to lot, and uh, which really makes it sometimes um, pigtails are a struggle because sometimes they're the pigtails are just too tight. Um, and, and if you find if you run into some of the pigtails are too tight, like they're really tight, I'll actually take the nut off and I'll pull the nut on the tight pigtail and I'll pull a little rubber out like that. And I'll pull that out and just throw that away. Because again, the the rubber, the the pigtails are rubber, so when you tighten this down, it's going to seal the rubber on this as well as that little bushing spacer. So if you have some really tight ones, just just take the rubber out, put the nut on, and then put it together. It'll uh, it'll be fine. Let's throw them in. should be a PG-9 and this guy here is for your power which he's gonna say that oh this ain't a PG-9 that's why I don't know how that one got in the mix but that is not a 9 that is an 11 that will not fit in the hole we'll use the 11s for other stuff I'm not sure that one must have got in my box somehow Here's a nine. The other one I showed you is an eleven. As you can see, this one actually fits in the hole. Okay, we'll tighten that up, and now let's put um, the Ethernet cables in this box. And I actually put all of this together beforehand, which is really nice. Um, we use the ninety-degree Ethernet glands. They come with a cap. Um, so it basically it's gonna go in like that, and then you're gonna put the rubber on, then you're gonna put the cap on, and then you're gonna put the nut on, just like that. Maybe I get started. Let's let's put that thing out of the way over there. I'll show you the positioning I put these in. Um, another cool thing is uh, we just actually had these made. Um, we're going to send these in our kits from now on. We might actually sell these, but these fit our connectors. And what's cool about these is when you get them, um, push that rubber out. When you get these, uh, they're actually big enough now that you can put the, the, full, the full connector through the thing. And then this is already cut for you. So you just put that in like that. Um, and then you throw it on the floor like that um, and then this goes through here like this you can stick the gland you can put that back in start the nut like that okay. and then you plug that guy in like that and then you can start this on here you don't need to go you don't need to go cranking these down just put them on a little bit like that it stays and then tighten this guy down like this and now you got a nice waterproof connection so and then take it back off you can just unscrew it like that and thread this out like that and that's your connection you can take it all back apart like this maybe well, I know it comes back apart a wire out of me because a little tabs catching but there you go so again we're gonna start selling these for our our glands and uh, and they will be in all our kits so, uh, let's throw these last few in sorry I got distracted with these I'm really excited about these um, there's a lot of people have been asking for them so we finally uh, had the time to get with our our China lady and uh, 
and work through the ones that actually fit our connectors. We tried a bunch of different ones. A lot of them are bigger connectors or they're really big and we just really like the 90 degree connectors. Um, seems like for our builds, the 90 degree connectors work really well. So we didn't really want to stray away and I didn't want to go to the ones with the cables on them because they're still bigger and I don't know. I guess when you find something you like, you just don't like the change. So um, I've had very good luck with these connectors. I don't think we've had but maybe four or five fail out of, I don't know, thousands. Um, On. Again, it's probably I think this part of the video is boring. Wait until I put pigtails in. Now that is boring, which most of you probably won't even watch. So I tighten those up. So now basically we've assembled the bottom. Inside, you see, I have them all pointed straight up. Okay. And now what we're going to want to do. Get these bags out of our way. At least our table's starting to, uh, to shrink up with stuff. Is uh, let's put our vent in. Okay. Come right over here. Slide the vent in the hole. Just tighten the nut up. Make sure it's square. Like that. Okay. So now the vent's in. Everything's dressed out. And we're going to stick the power cord through next because it's going to be a whole lot easier to do the power out of the box than in the box. So just pull this straight through like that. Okay. Let's get this stuff out of the way. Let's bring our tray over here. Okay. And let's cut these. Um, I like to cut these ends off on these. Like that. Let's get out our strippers. Let's strip these back. And again, because I like to use a drill, we're going to fire up the old drill and tighten these in. Ooh, come on. No stray wires that okay so now we have um, got our power in let's take and pull the power cord through as you can see we're just going to slide this in so um, you can see we've slid that in now you see there's plenty of room for everything in this box so next what we're going to do is we are going to um, Put the screws to hold the tray down. You'll see them. They're the silver ones in the kit. There's probably a couple extra in there. All you need is four. And see if my tip, yeah, my tip is still magnetized. Okay. So now at this point, that's all in. What I want to do is kind of lay this, this power wire in and let's tighten up this PG9 gland, okay? And what I actually like to do at this point is I like to power these up because if there's a problem, I don't want all the pigtails in my way. So I'm going to double check that this is in the 12 volt position and the jumper's right and everything looks right here. So let's power this thing up and I am going to set the power supply at this point to just under 12 volts. Because it's really easy to get to, there's nothing in my way. I'm going to stick that on, see we're at 12.14. Let's bring this thing down to, there we go, 11.99. Beautiful. So, as you can see, 
we are up. It's booting, Culp lights. Um, we're all powered up. We got all our blinky flashies going. So I'm just gonna give it a second while it's booting, and then I'm gonna power it back down, and we are going to finish the rest of the install. But while it's booting, I guess we can just keep going. So now you have your um, pastors in the front. They are numbered one, two, three on the here. So one's actually to the right, three is here. And that's just because on some of our controllers, that direction lays out the best. Um, so we just use the same stickers. Um, but realistically, if you look at this controller, it kind of does too, because you have nine through 12, 13 through 16. So it allows the longest one out to hit up through here. So. Um, Let's just plug. No network. That's right. There's no network right now. So this one right here is the closest one. So one, two, three. Well, I guess now we have a... I'm just going to lay them in like that. It's a good spot for one of these zip ties. I would just take one like this, zip tie them real nice, and let's do one down here too. Like that. Clip our zip ties. We want them to look nice. And then the last one we actually have will be this one right here which is the ethernet one that's going to come over and that is going to plug into that guy right there okay as you can see we are pretty much together i'm going to unplug this and we're going to move on to one of the last steps which is the most exciting one not really maybe for some people okay let's move this stuff out of our way Let's put these actually in a bag because these will go out to the new owner of the controller. And for the fun part, it's pigtail time. Um, so let's dump these out, these little connectors. I did pull these out of the board ahead of time. Um, and I'm not sure if I ran these down or not. I thought I did. But this one may have got missed. Let's see here. Nope. They did. So they're all run down all the way. Um, I pre unscrewed them. I thought I did on these. So you didn't have to watch that torture. Um, and then we're going to grab our scissors. Let's move all this junk out of our way. So we got junk everywhere on this build. Okay. So. We have our um, one through eight. So these are gonna go super fast. I'm gonna pull a little cut line on here. Zach did that. Because Zach's cool like that. Just, okay. And then what we're gonna do I'm just going to slide these on um, here. Now, normally what we'll do is we'll slide all these on, and then I'm going to push them through the box like normal, and then hook them all up to the board. And I'm not going to shrink them yet. Um, you actually won't see me shrinking them because um, from here it's going to go over to the test table. We test every controller that comes out of here. So it'll go to the test table, and if for some reason I got a bad pigtail, um, I don't have to waste a, a sleeve. I can just change it, and I know it's all been tested. Um, I will heat shrink them and send it off to the customer. Nice, there's only eight of them. I gotta do another controller builder after this one, 16. Okay, now as you can see, there is an extra pigtail. Um, I do send an extra pigtail with my controllers. Uh, the reason why I do that is if for some reason you have a bad one, um, I don't have to just send you a single pigtail. So 
ultimately for shipping it's better um, again I lay mine out always the same I always do odds at the top even on the bottoms so I get one two three four five six seven eight that's just how I always lay them out um, again you can go one two three four five six seven eight I guess if you want um, I just don't like the way they lay in when they're that way so um, that's why I always stagger the numbers like that now again some of these some of these glands they just don't go through very well so sometimes you just have to take the nut off pull the nut down if they're too big and then get that rubber through or sometimes you just got to pull that rubber off um you know get rid of the rubber if the pigtails are too big um i mean we have some they're just tight some of the bigger ones and uh they just vary it's like sometimes you get the perfect storm and they just go in and you're like i wish they all were like this and then other times you fight like 200 of them. pigtails um, I always do my pigtails with a screw gun um, Walmart used to sell these um, I, I think Lowe's has them now um, I like to get mine nice and tight now if you're um, if your wires are tin like these these are pretty decent um, I'll, I'll go ahead and leave the tinning on I might trim the ends just to clean them up and then put them on I do not do not ever recommend ferrules these connectors are not designed for ferrules um, you can talk to David Pitts who actually makes them he does not advocate ferrules and you just don't get them tight enough um, and then they'll make heat and, and burn up so just don't ferrule them uh, and you're gonna see 400 things selling you to or not to um, I do not ferrule anything. connectors are on let's lay out this um let's lay these out and get these tightened up and then this controller build is done minus testing so one uh his board's one's at the top so we're just going to go ahead and plug one in and then we're going to go to two and then we're going to go to three four five six seven and last but not least eight okay so now i'm just going to take these and pull them pull them like that it's just, it is tough pull make them look good but to kind of keep them all consistent here now we could zip tie these but I'm not going to because again if you got to do some work in here you don't really want you know them. another way to tell is like all the top ones should be on all the tops so you can look they're all on the tops and then the bottoms are obviously on the bottoms and now I'll just take and tighten these suckers up here Now you have completely built your K8.
again, thank you for uh, watching our videos. If you made it to the end, um, be sure to like, share, push us out. Um, we have a bunch of other videos, so feel free to watch them, like them, um, share them, and uh, we'll continue to uh, come up with uh, great solutions for controller builds. Again, thank you very much. I'm Ricky with CCL Controllers.